Welcome to Garner's Thinkcast, and a special three-part series on one of the most pressing issues of our time, diversity, equity, and inclusion. I'm guest host Rob O'Donoghue, a senior director and analyst in Garner's CIO Research Group, focusing on leadership, culture, people, and diversity, equity, and inclusion. Mentions of diversity, equity, and inclusion, sometimes shortened to DEI on S&P 500 earnings calls, have increased 658% just since 2018. Nearly 9 in 10 Fortune 100 companies list equity as one of their corporate values. Progress, yes, but still, we've got a long way to go. Before we move on, I encourage you to check out Gartner's complimentary diversity, equity and inclusion resource center, which is chock full of insight and linked in the show notes. Today, I'm joined by Chris Steadley, the global head of DEI here at Gartner. Chris has extensive experience in this space, and I'm thrilled to welcome him to Thinkcast to discuss the state of DEI. Hey, Chris, welcome to the podcast. How are you? I'm great, Rob. How are you? Really good. Great to have you here. So Chris, at the top of the show, I called out how focused leaders and organizations, both large and small, are on DEI or diversity, equity, and inclusion. Does this sync up with what you're seeing or is it all talk? There's two things that just kind of really jump out. The the level of commitment that we see from organizations. I mean, there are statements around this. There are very clear objectives around where their uh, organizations are trying to go and what they like to achieve. So that's different. That's happening more. And also just greater investment. I can remember there may be you know small shops here and there. Those teams have grown and the organizations are taking it more seriously. So this is no longer just performative. Organizations are taking this and putting their money behind this. Excellent. It's really encouraging to hear that. And definitely marries up with what I've seen from some of the research I've done over the last year or so on this. Outside of those two, anything else jump out as the biggest changes you've seen over the last couple of years? Maybe pointing towards the E, the equity part of the D, E and I conversation? Yeah, the leading with inclusion is the is the one thing that that really jumps out. And I'm glad we've gotten here, right? Because you really need to have that as the foundation in order to achieve greater equity and then ultimately achieve the diversity that you're looking for. Now, we've seen that expand too, right? We're seeing equity come into the conversation more, which is really about making sure that not that everyone has the same thing, but that everyone has what they need. So that's very different. And then We've also begun hearing more about belonging, and and that's getting very specific about making sure that people feel that this is a place where they can really be themselves. And we've also seen other additions to the, I would say, to the acronym around engagement and even accessibility now, which is one that's starting to come up more and more. But really the focus on the cultural aspect of it, the environmental factor there. That's something that's, uh, it, it's really been great to see that shift happen here over the past couple of years. When we talk about the couple of years, two, I suppose, major things jump out, right? The pandemic is one. We can't get away from that. And then also the movements for social justice that happened around the middle of 2020. How much do you think both of these have impacted or affected business leaders in the way they're looking at and prioritizing diversity, equity, and inclusion? Yeah, well, Rob, you and I, we live in two different countries. We've experienced the past couple of years from a couple of different perspectives. And but just think about what you were doing in 2020, particularly that early part of the year. You were at home and you were in front of your computer and you were getting notifications and you were checking the news and you heard about COVID and social justice movements everywhere. And it had your attention, right? It certainly had mine. And you know what it did is it, it just created a, this tremendous sense of urgency. Like that spotlight, it made it, this is an urgent situation, right? And, and, and what we saw in turn was employees just simply unafraid to be vocal about the frustrations and how these inequities that were showing up in society were also showing up within the organizations as well. And and so when we think about, well, how are business leaders looking at this differently or prioritizing DEI differently? Well, it's a mission critical corporate priority, right? There's, There's no question about that. And there's been a realization that this is, this is absolutely essential 
to increase and sustain business performance. And then going back to that other point that I made earlier, it's less about, hey, we need to focus on the diversity side of it. It's more about the cultural, the environmental aspect of it, inclusion, right? We need to lead with that. If we do the right things, then we're going to see the right outcomes. One of the pieces of research, again, that jumps into mind, highlighted the lack of focus around inclusion and maybe an overemphasis on diversity. And I think, to your point, we need to really focus on the inclusion piece. And I think that links nicely into the next question, because the pandemic itself has kind of accelerated the way we work from being on-site to remote. And we're talking much more now around hybrid work models. In what perspective do you think hybrid work has created an unevenness or even maybe a lack of fairness? Yeah, this one goes back to, as all this stuff does, Rob, it's a matter of perspective. What is your gender? What is your race? What different abilities do you bring to the table? And the answer to that question is going to be different. Now, generally, there is a, I would say, an initial perception that the playing field was leveled. And so when we're all working in a virtual manner, the focus really does have to shift to outcomes and results. I I can be less biased in terms of how the work is actually getting done. Are you delivering on what you're supposed to be doing? The differing abilities in, in many cases became hidden abilities. And that was something that was an advantage to others. And then you know, we're working from our homes, right? We, we are dressed a little bit more casually. And what that's doing is it, it is allowing many people to show up more authentically, right? And, and when you do that, you actually show up as really the, the best version of who you are. There's a statement out there that, that says, well, well, you know, when you're bringing your full self to whatever it is that you're doing, there really is no competition because there's uh, no one who can compete with you because we're all unique as individuals. But there's a downside to that. And when we think about caregiving, particularly the primary caregivers, I mean, women were three times more likely than men to assume those childcare duties. And so while we're at home and we think things are a little bit more flexible, well, schools in many cases were also closed as well. And who is that burden falling upon also while trying to maintain their full-time job. Now, when we think about hybrid, that presents a, it, it's a new set of challenges, right? So, you know, we just kind of spoke to the, the gender inequities there, but now there's this, this ability to participate live versus virtual. And now you have to ask yourself this question of, is this another area of potential bias? And anytime there's differences, then you have to say yes, and you have to interrogate that. And listen, all this is still happening in a pandemic landscape that is still evolving, right? And back to the point about equity, we really need to work harder than ever to ensure that there is equity in the decisions that are being made. Here at Gartner, we believe in making data-driven decisions. So I wanna pause and point you towards our research on how to measure diversity, equity, and inclusion. Download it at the link in our show notes and use these insights to help managers set and meet targets evaluate inclusion through employee surveys that focus on seven key areas and improve equity across the organization. So you're the global head of DEI here at Gartner, and I assume that you're talking to other DEI leaders you know, across industries. What are you inspired by from them? What are those progressive leaders doing right that you've seen over the last year or so? Yeah, there was a travel agency. So I've talked to the chief diversity officer there. This was early last year. And and one of the things that really struck me was how aggressively they were leading with inclusion. And that's all the conversation was about. And they were creating branding. They were creating Zoom and WebEx and Teams, whatever your platform is. They were creating backgrounds for that banners for social media. And it was all about togetherness and team and inclusion and just embracing those differences. And what was not being talked about was different diversity objectives or goals. So I thought that was just really inspiring to see. And so this set, I know I'm going to sound like a broken record here, Rob, but really that leading with inclusion, it's a really, really big thing. 
Also, just the increases in data transparency. I've talked to a, a number of people at different professional services firms, and you can go out there and see on the internet, you get their, their diversity reports, and they're being very clear about here's where we are from a representation perspective, even looking at it by leadership levels or different technical roles, and, and then even getting into, well, hey, here's how our associates are experiencing our environment, and we're going to be transparent about that as well. Uh, so those are things that are really inspirational to see. And then in some of these discussions, and this is the stuff that doesn't really kind of show up in the large programs sometimes, but there's a lot of emphasis on how do we embed this into the fabric of the organization. There are many still that will will think of this as a primarily a human resources problem. Well, the capability itself may be housed within the human resources organization. And yeah, there are a number of people and talent processes that need to be looked at as part of creating or bringing that equity. But all these organizations, regardless of what it is that you do, you have a responsibility to create an inclusive work environment. And that is, how are you leading your team? How are you being as a teammate? Uh, how are you doing from an education perspective? And so seeing that show up is is also something that I'm seeing done really well. In terms of things that maybe could be done a bit better, right? It's There's still this, hey, this is only going to benefit a specific group of people. It's either going to, you know, it's mostly going to benefit women or, you know, if we just kind of looked in the U.S., this is something that's for people of color. And that's frankly not true, right? When we're talking about being more inclusive as leaders or creating a greater inclusion within organizations. This is just being effective as leaders and being an effective organization. And the more effective we are as leaders and as organizations, the more successful we're going to be. And that actually creates more opportunity for everybody. So there's more messaging and education that needs to get out there about that. But that's one of those things that we can really be focusing on and doing a better job of overall. Yeah, some great examples of the good and maybe not so good there from from the experiences you've had. I suppose one angle on that or just leading into another perspective, diversity, equity and inclusion touches every part of the organization at all levels, right? It's not just one function or just one region. And from your experience, are you seeing things done differently, maybe from a HR perspective compared to that of an IT leader, or is it much the same? This is a good question, Rob, and this goes back to really about sort of the, the leadership. So whether you're an HR leader or you're an IT leader, let's just focus on the point of being a leader. And a good, effective leader really needs to be taking the lead on creating an inclusive culture. You need to be leading with empathy, with vulnerability, and ensuring that the workplace that you have, that you're fostering that. Now, the difference may be IT versus HR. The HR leader may also be the person who's responsible for managing the DEI function. There are organizations where DEI may be reporting directly into the CEO per se. And so then there are some different factors there. But if the HR leader's role does include managing the DEI function, then they need to be managing that and making sure that it's remediating bias in different processes as well. But every leader needs to be thinking about what can we do to make this an inclusive workplace, and and not just even a workplace, but even starting to think about, well, how are my various products and and services that are in the market, how are they showing up as well? And and are we being inclusive there? Great. Empathy, vulnerability, authenticity, three skills, competencies that are very important, I think, not just to make DEI a success, but a leader, a successful leader overall, right? Want more actionable, objective insight around DEI? Follow the link in the show notes to learn more about the Gartner Reimagine HR Conference, the premier conference for HR executives and their teams taking place this October in Orlando, Florida. If you had a magic wand and would like to make one change across the landscape of diversity, equity, and inclusion, really something that would have a huge impact for the enterprise across the world, for every enterprise, what would it be? What jumps to mind? That everyone is able to see themselves in leadership. So what I mean by that, Rob, is someone is able to look at the top of the organizational chart, whether they are 
an actual employee of the organization or whether they're a candidate and they're looking to maybe join the organization or apply. If I look at the board of directors or the C-suite and I see someone who looks like me, the cascading implications of that are significant. So there's this quote I like, if I can see it, I can believe it. And having that representative leadership at the top of the organization shows that there is a way. Now that path might be grueling and hard, and those two things are likely true, but it's possible. And as long as it's possible, then as long as I've got the right mindset, then listen, it's going to have implications from an attraction standpoint. People are going to want to come to this organization and you're like, oh, okay, I can actually grow here because I actually see leaders who look like me in our senior leadership roles. If I'm already an employee at the organization, I'm more likely to stay, right? Because, hey, I've got a chance here. And it just also creates a greater sense of safety as well. It gives a perception. It's not just perception. It's actually reality. The perspective that you may have as an employee from an underrepresented group, that perspective that you have is also being shared at the most senior levels of the organization where real decisions are being made. So Chris, picking up on that, how do you see leaders in the organization really help underrepresented talent from every level progress to even get to that C-suite level? Yeah, this is a good one. Now, there's a lot of different things out there. So I want to acknowledge that first and foremost. The one thing that really jumps out when I think about our work at Gartner and then when I think about the work that I'm hearing about others who I speak with, the word sponsorship shows up a lot, right? And 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 so what does that actually mean or, or how does that show up? And it's being very deliberate about, I'm going to give that associate some visibility, some exposure to be seen by other people, right? Who can formulate an opinion. Then maybe a year or two down the line, they've got a job opening and they're like, oh, I saw you, Rob, at that thing and you were amazing. And I'd really love to you to come in and interview for this new role. And that is a very deliberate act by the senior leader by saying that, hey, Rob, I'm going to take you by the hand and I'm going to bring you into this meeting or I'm going to make sure I introduce you to these five people who can really change the trajectory of your career. Maybe we're going to put you on a specific initiative, but anytime that you're doing something like that, that is a sponsorship. And that is actually the leader themselves putting their almost their reputation a little bit, their backing behind that employee, really making a bet that, hey, as as long as we can create some sponsorship and some exposure here, uh, I think this is going to work out well for the employee and for the organization. So the more that we can do that, and that's not just something that is done by the senior most leaders for emerging leaders, but it can be done by line managers for employees who are looking to maybe get into management one day. So this is something that can happen at all tiers of the organization. And go back to that magic wand question, if we had more people doing sponsorship up and down organizations, that would also have a tremendous impact on the way our organizations look as well. Mm. And I just even maybe tie back to what you were saying all the way through, right? Culture change and it's behavior change. And once you change the behaviors, you can change the culture and that'll make things more inclusive and more equitable as well. So Chris, this has been so insightful, really, really interesting. Thank you so much for your time today. It was great. Glad to be here. And thank you for doing this, Rob. We'll be back wherever you listen to podcasts two weeks from today. Mark your calendars for February 8th with the second episode of this three-part series when we'll be focusing specifically on equity. Please rate, review, subscribe, and share ThinkCast with a colleague so neither of you miss it. ThinkCast is a production of Gartner. This podcast may not be reproduced or distributed in any form without Gartner's permission. It consists of the opinions of Gartner's research organization, which should not be construed as statements of fact. Content provided by other speakers is expressly the views of the speaker and or their organization. While the information contained in this podcast has been obtained from sources believed to be reliable, Gartner disclaims all warranties as to the accuracy, completeness, or adequacy of such information. Although Gartner Research may address legal and financial issues, Gartner does not provide legal or investment advice, and its research should not be construed or used as such.